Hello, Brabs. We're back with Grandmother's Stories. As we're nearing the end of this book. Well, not particular. Last few chapters. Saving the Frenchman's life. Father and I were sitting by a roaring fire, said Grandma, while the children calmly hugged their dolls. One bitter cold night in February, we were both reading, and we were very much interested in what we were reading. Donna Maria, the cat, purred by my side, while Mars and Rover stretched themselves between us and lazily watched the fire in our faces or dozed off with one eye open. Outside, everything was perfectly quiet and still. There was no wind, and all nature appeared to be sleeping. Suddenly, Father raised his head and said, Did you hear that cry? I said no. Then we both listened. Soon, a wailing cry came up. It seemed from far away. Father got up and opened the door. Again, it came distinctly, and again. And Father said, Someone has fallen into one of the air holes in the ice and cannot get out. We must go and see if we can save him. So we put on our warm wraps, and while Father got a coil of rope, the axe, and two stout walking sticks, I got some brandy and a woolen blanket, so that if we got him out of the water, we would have something to wrap him and a stimulant to give him. When we got outside, the cries came quick and sharp, and Father gave several loud and ringing halloos, so that the man or whoever it might be, would know that someone was coming to his rescue. Upon getting outside of our own grounds, we went into a forest full of underbrush and big stones with three feet of snow covering them, with no pathway. Luckily, the bright round full moon was just rising. The stars shone with the clear white brilliancy. Peculiar. Oh, no. Peculiar to north, northern latitudes. And the white snow that covered everything reflected back their light so that we could see our way ahead very well. But we could not see through the snow to pick out a good place for our feet. So we went laboring and stumbling along as best we could. Mars had followed us to see if he could be of any help, but Rover, after taking a sniff of the cold air, had dropped himself down before the fire again. The cries were repeated occasionally and each time Father would return and answering hello. Often we would come to heavy drifts that it was useless to try to walk around and almost impossible to walk over. So by the time we reached the bank of the lake, which was two miles away, the cries of the poor fellow were getting pretty weak. Here Father shouted to him to keep up courage, for we would soon be there. Walking on the ice was much easier, and we went over the half mile that lay between us in comparatively quick time. But when we got where the poor fellow was, we found it would be difficult task, would be a difficult task to get him out, for around an air hole the ice is always thin, being worn by the action of the water, and the man in his attempts to get out had broken it at every effort. Father told him not to be frightened, but to do just what he said, and he would have he would save him. First he threw him one end of the rope made into a noose, and told him to put it over his head and under his arms. With the axe he had brought, he had cut down a couple of small saplings just before he got to the lake, and these he put down on the ice, with their heaviest ends near the man. Then... Taking hold of the other end of the rope, he directed me to steady the saplings and told the man to take hold of the ends near him and to climb while he would pull. After several efforts and failures, Father told him that it was his only hope for life, that he must use all of his strength or he would never get out. Then, with one supreme effort of climbing and pulling, we got him out of the water and into a safe place. The moment it was done, he fell over completely insensible. We poured some brandy down his throat and carried him to the bank of the lake, where Father built a fire and we warmed him and dried him as well as we could, and warmed ourselves too, for by this time we were pretty cold and somewhat wet. Then we wrapped him in the dry blanket I had brought, and Father took him on his back and carried him home, while I followed with the rope and axe. It was lucky the man was a little fellow, or Father could never have got him home. 
as it was, it was three o'clock in the morning before we reached that welcome haven. But who was the man? Asked the children. Oh, said Grandma. That is the worst part of it. He was a miserable, drunken Frenchman who beat his wife and abused his children and ought to have drowned. He had been to Mackinac and got drunk and so fell into the air hole. I have often thought it was a misfortune we happened to hear him. That's good old kindly Aunt Emily. All right, Bob. Goodbye.